One of the challenges you have, of course, on wireless networks is that everybody can hear everything going through the air. It's like a radio station. You can simply tune in a packet capture device, and it can listen in on all of the packets going over your network. And if you do not have encrypted data, people will be able to see exactly what you're sending through the network. One solution to this is to encrypt the data that's going through the air. Someone can still grab the packets, they can still listen in to what's going on, and they can look at the information, but they won't be able to tell what's inside of those packets. It's completely encrypted, and they won't be able to see what you're doing. That means when somebody needs access to the network, they want to be able to communicate over this secure connection, you'll need to provide them with the key that will allow them access to the network. Through the years, we've used a couple of different kinds of encryption methodologies on our wireless networks. One is called WEP, and the other is called WPA. WEP was the very first encryption type we used on our 802.11 wireless networks. It stands for Wired Equivalent Privacy, the idea being that now you can have a wireless network that is just as private as the wires that you were previously using. There were different levels of encryption available on this WEP communication. One was a 64-bit key, and the other was a 128-bit key size. And you could use different key sizes depending on where you were in the world and the type of implementation you wanted to use on your network. However, there was a big problem with WEP. In 2001, we found some very significant cryptographic vulnerabilities inside of the mechanisms used to encrypt and decrypt this data over our networks. The first bytes of that key stream that are coming out are what we call strongly non-random. And if you are trying to make sure that your information is secure and completely encrypted, you want complete randomization. You don't want any type of that data to be predictable. And that, of course, opened the door for everyone to be able to break these keys. That means that you can now gather a lot of packets and start piecing together what that web key is. It became very, very easy to determine what the key was being used. And at that point, of course, you can see all of the data going across the network. And of course, if you wanted to send data onto the network, you're now able to do that as well because you have the key. Obviously, that was not a situation we wanted for our wireless networks. So very clearly, we decided WEP was nothing we should be able to use. Let's create a new way of encrypting traffic on our networks. The successor to WEP is something called WPA. It stands for Wi-Fi Protected Access. With WPA, we used a method of ciphering this information called the RC4 cipher, and we used an integrity protocol called TKIP. This is the Temporal Key Integrity Protocol. This was a middleman. This WPA was something that we implemented very quickly. It was not completely standardized at the time, but it was a way of encrypting data that we could use on the same hardware we were using with WEP. So we could tell people, don't use WEP anymore. Update your software. Use the same hardware, and you'll be able to use WPA. Even if you somehow were able to get the key, you would only be able to decrypt that particular packet. You would need a way to maintain that decryption all the way through. But it was just a short-term workaround. We needed something that was well-vetted, it was standardized, and that's where we came up with WPA2. WPA2 was the final standard for this brand new encryption type. It used a cipher called AES. That's a very common cipher called the Advanced Encryption Standard that replaced the RC4. Unfortunately, it was a cipher that required a lot more CPU cycles. So we had to upgrade, in many cases, from our old hardware to a brand new access point. This also used counter mode with cipher block chaining message authentication code protocol which we happily call CCMP. That replaced the TKIP. And that's a much more secure protocol to use for authenticating and making sure that the data within the packets is exactly where it came from. You also will hear the term WPA2 Enterprise. That is when you're integrating your WPA2 keys with an authentication method that you're using in place behind the scenes. This adds 802.1x authentication. So you can use your standard username and password that you always use to log into your servers or log into your domain. Now you're using it to gain access to the wireless network. And so your administrators in your very large environment can now change your password in one place, and it changes it for your server access, your domain access, and your wireless access. If you are on an enterprise network, you're probably using WPA2 Enterprise because of its ease of administration.
That's why when you're implementing a wireless network, you're never using WEP. You're probably not using WPA. These days, if you have an 802.11 network and you're implementing any type of encryption, you're always using WPA2.